Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Mitchell. This is my 11th Kickstarter campaign and I'd like to introduce to you the ES6929P Standalone Speech Recognition Module. This is the power supply terminal, your output terminals, your programming buttons, and your speaker connector. Right now I've got uh, one of the 0.5 watt 8 ohm speakers connected to it. So what I've programmed in, I'll show you how to program in just a second, but I've got uh, four different commands programmed in uh, to the ES6929P right now. For output one, I've got Zebra. For output two, I've got Tommy. For output three, I've got Solder. And for output four, I've got Pompous. Now, each output also has an LED on it that will show you uh, which output is being activated. Now once you program, you don't want to hear my voice, you simply unplug the, the speaker. It'll still operate uh, as it normally would. You take one of your output connectors, this is the positive signal line, red, and ground. Each one has a ground. You plug it in, and I connect that to my external circuit, and I can control it, output one, using Zebra. So I'm going to power it up, um, listen to the commands coming from the speaker. I've got 9 volts ready to be connected to the power supply line. The top terminal is your V plus line, 7.5 to 9 volts, and your bottom is your ground terminal, your DC ground. So I'm going to plug it in and it's going to say enter scanning mode. And again, watch the LEDs. They will tell you which output is being activated. I can unplug or leave the speaker in on, and the speaker will also tell me, the unit will also tell me which output has been activated. So let me plug it in. Zebra. Tommy. Solder. Tommy. Zebra. Pompous. 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 Solder. Hi, my name is Sean Swift, and this is the Fire Cricket. The Fire Cricket is a light sound and motion controller, which is Arduino compatible. It has a built-in 3-watt amplifier, a MOSFET for driving high-powered inductive loads, like this vibration motor and the 3-watt LED here, and it also features a slot for a micro SD card, which can store sound effects or configuration files or even images. Um, I've configured the uh, Fire Cricket here for a Judge Dredd Lawgiver with some uh, additional features uh, to sh give you a taste of what it can do. Of course, these are from the uh, first Judge Dredd movie, the uh, voices. Actually, I think it's from the video game. And way over to the uh, servo here. So, yeah, um, the ammo refilled when I uh, did that, so I can uh, fire again. Now, um, there's another little animation here. If I uh, hit this red push button, Now the uh, speaker that I've got here is a uh, 4 ohm speaker and uh, that's what you should use if you want the uh, maximum volume. Um, now the size of the speaker that you use, you can use whatever size speaker that you want to, but I recommend one that's uh, as big as you can fit inside of your prop. Um, over here I've got a, uh, I think this is a 3 inch speaker. Um, four inch is probably the maximum which you really want to go to. I mean, it is only a two watt amplifier, so it can't drive a huge speaker really well. But um, I'll plug in a couple different speakers here so you can hear uh, how the sound effects sound differently.
create an ultrasonic sentry unit. It patrols back and forth until it detects something breaching its field of view. The LCD even says, object detected. In sound versus distance mode, I press and hold the cell button and the unit emits a different frequency beep depending on how close the object is. If nothing's within range, it doesn't beep at all. In rangefinder mode, the ultrasonic experiment set can measure up to 200 centimeters accurately. Here's a print circuit board at 7 centimeters. Distance is 7 centimeters. I'll bring it over to 16 centimeters. Unit reads, distance is 16 centimeters. And up to 21 centimeters. Distance is 21 centimeters. I'm currently aiming this at the wall, but just to give you a better idea, the camera doesn't pick up the LCD so well, but to the human eye, it looks fantastic. In security mode, we take a sample while the unit is fixed on an object by pressing the cell button. Acquiring sample. Sample acquired, LED shut down. The LED turns off, and it waits for something to breach the path. And then the unit resets. You can alter the program easily. The ultrasonic ping sensor can easily be removed from its female header socket, and you can also remove the LCD by removing the top four screws. And underneath, you'll see an Atmel 328PU chip, the same chip used in your Arduino Uno. So you can reprogram this by removing this chip, placing your Arduino Uno, taking the sample code that's included with this uh, campaign, and creating your own ultrasonic circuit. Socket, we're able to replace faulty chips with ones that are known to work. Additionally, this technology allows us to individually test every single breakout board in an actual audio responsive product. To set up the MSG EQ7, you're going to need a couple of different things. Of course, you're going to need your breakout board, you're also going to need a small breadboard in addition to a microcontroller. For this case, we're going to be using an Arduino Uno. You'll need a few jumpers, and you'll also need some method of connecting to your audio source. I'm using this 2.5 millimeter headphone jack to breadboard adapter that I built. However, there's a variety of ways that you can do this. First, we're going to apply voltage to the breadboard by connecting it to the Arduino's five volt and ground connections except that we've connected a homemade WS2812B, also known as NeoPixel matrix to it. And basically we've added a couple of libraries and functions that do some different things than our original program. First we've included the NeoPixel, GFX, and NeoMatrix libraries, which are available from A to Fruit. Additionally, since this has 11 channels, I've also averaged some of the channels out. So for example, our third channel is actually an average between channel one and channel two. So let's go ahead and power it up. So as you can see, it's detecting some background noise just like it was on our serial monitor program. If I touch it, my body adds background noise, outputting the new signal. If I touch different parts of it, it impacts the output differently. Let me go ahead and connect this to a computer. One important thing to note is that you want to be familiar with whatever lights or motors that you might be using in your project before bringing this code into it. You want to know how to give values to your project before you start getting those values from the MSG EQ7. So this about sums up how to use this board. Thanks for taking the time to watch and we're looking forward to seeing all the amazing projects that you guys can make with the MSG EQ7 breakout board.